Hey everybody, IcyCat here, bringing you another single player mission walkthrough. This time we're checking out Capcan. When doing intel work in the field, you need to know how to improvise. A hit squad has been sent after your source and has the building surrounded. As your ammunition and defenses are limited, you will need to manage your resources to protect your asset. Cap Can is our best operator for this kind of situation. His signature entry denial devices will help you neutralize enemies as they attempt to breach. All right, so what we have here is a wave defense-based mission. We have three waves of enemies that'll come in. They'll try to take out this hostage here in the center of the room. We can't move the hostage, so we need to set up our defenses by putting up our reinforcement panels or laser trip wires that Capcan has, barbed wire, whatever we've got, set up into a defensible position and then take them out as they come in. This whole mission structure takes place pretty much inside of this one room. The only reason I'll ever have to leave this room is to refresh the traps as they get, uh, you know, used or taken out. Uh, you'll see here as I try to place this tripwire, I keep looking at the right-hand side of the door. I actually deploy them by looking at the center of the door, and I, I wasn't understanding that at first, so I kept looking at the side that he puts them on, even though you activate it by using the center of the door or the window. Uh, as you can see there, those lasers are pretty bright. I've never actually tricked a player into stepping on one because they're so obvious. Uh, even hiding them behind barricades and barbed wire, uh, you can still see that they're there because there's a giant orange spike that sticks out the other side of the wall. So uh, even covering them up, they're still obvious that they're there. And uh, the terrorists seem to step on them pretty good, though, and they do die in one hit. Again, I'm not sure if the players do because I've never managed to get one to step on it, but I'm pretty sure they would as well. And this right here is all this mode consists of. The enemies come in through the doorways, they funnel in, and I... Drop them out, stopping to reload as necessary, and that's all there is. There's no challenge to this. Now, I am doing this on normal because I was trying to get all my sessions recorded. Uh, I figured it was more important to get the footage of as many of the missions as I could rather than challenging myself by putting it on the hardest one and maybe not getting them all in. But even if I raise it up to a harder difficulty, they're going to be more accurate, they're going to do more damage, there might be higher numbers of them, but the formula is the same. You stay in one or two rooms, and maybe the hallways outside of them by replenishing your traps, and that's all you do. There's nothing else to this. You always go back into this area, wait for them to come to you, and, and it's like a turkey shoot as they just come through the doors. You just drop them, and that's all there is to this. It's very unsatisfying from a player perspective. There's nothing interesting here that's happening. I would like to see them change this up when the game comes out now i know today it was announced that the game went gold so they've you know submitted it it's it's ready to go it's locked in but i would like to see a day one patch or an update or something that would change this up and make this more interesting and here i think is the way i would go about that i would make it so that you can move the hostage in this particular mode um you know just like you can in hostage rescue when you pick them up and move them and what I would do is for each wave, there would be a different position on the map that you can move them to. So wave one would be here in this room, for instance. Now, when this wave is clear, you would go to the second wave in a different part of the map, and it would be a pre-marked position. You would have to get the hostage there while the timer was counting down. The faster you got them there, the more time you'd have to set up another trap or two. Um, you'd have to decide, do I want to use all my reinforcement panels on this first section or on the middle section? Do I want to use one here and one in the next section? Do I want to spread out my barbed wire? Do I, you know, like, how do I want to use my resources as I go? Then when you get to the third section, maybe that's an extraction point with some, you know, a smoke grenade out on the street that you have to get them to. And uh, they're kind of having a fighting extraction as they get to that. So two or three waves in different places around the map that you move the hostage to, th two or three different locations. And uh, then a final extraction phase where you fight some guys on the exterior as, as you get to the smoke grenade position there. And that could even be a, a wave structure in itself in that you're outside, but you have to fend off, you know, a half dozen guys while, while the timer fills up and then the extraction is considered complete or something like that. Uh, I mean, that's how I would keep this mode a little bit more interesting other than just sticking in these one or two rooms like this. The only reason for me to leave this room is to come out here and refresh these traps. There's no point in ever leaving this room. Now, the thing is, 
I imagine it would be more interesting with more players, right? Because you could have a player in the defensive room, and then the other players could sort of spread out a little bit more and, and engage in more interesting ways. And that might be okay, sort of, for the co-op terrorist hunt for defensive mode, but for what is intended as a solo mission, I mean, you can play it cooperatively, but if your solo mission works better cooperatively, then you have a fatal flaw in the design of your solo mission. At least that's my opinion. Uh, if what's intended to be played solo is better when it's not, then you haven't done it right. I'd really like to see them find a way to change this up and make it more interesting. I, you know, I think I have a really good idea for how to do that. I think there's other ideas that could be implemented as well to make this more interesting. The only thing that was really interesting about this experience at all is there's that shield operator that I was shooting earlier, and I will find another one here uh, as I wrap up this mission as well. And that was the only unique and interesting thing. Uh, I would like to see that shield operator there is brought across to some other missions uh, for other kinds of terrorist hunt, but there's nothing engaging here, nothing interesting, nothing satisfying for me as a player. And I hope that this is addressed because I really enjoyed the other single player missions. I enjoyed all of them except for this one with this format. So hopefully that gets addressed. All right, guys, well, that's been our look at the single player walkthrough for Capcan's solo mission on the Biker Club map. Next week, we'll continue to take a look at more in-depth operator profiles, as well as another solo mission walkthrough. To stay up to date on all the latest tips, tricks, news, and information for Rainbow Six Siege, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.